What's going on today? We're doing basic malware RE, which stands for basic malware reverse engineering. Now, in this room, we will be ex examining three executable files. The three executable files, you can download them from here. As you can see, with every task, there is an attachment. Download the file in order to analyze it. Now, in this room, you will be required to find the flag of every executable file, as you can see here. Now, every executable file is just printing out an MD5 hash on the screen. You're not required to open the function, uh, the uh, executable. You're required only to reverse it, analyze it, and extract the flag. So what it takes to do that, just basic knowledge of assembly, basic knowledge of C, and how to navigate through the debugger. So for that, I used um, Ghidra. I opened the executable files, as you can see here. So let's start with the first one. So basically, all the time, we start by the entry function. So the entry function here gives us an idea about how the function or how the file starts. So go to the entry function, we have the C code and we have the assembly code. Now we have to understand how the C code works in order to extract the flag, although not necessarily all the time, but this is how you're supposed to do it if you want to just do it method methodically. So we have the entry here. As you can see, we have a variable called IP text, and IP text equals the ND5 hash of this string. Now the string is kind of tempting to grab it and copy it immediately to the flag field, but it's not going to be correct. So basically here, it's simple actually. So the IP text will take the MD5 hash of this string and then print it out to the screen. Okay, that's the very simple. So in order to find the flag, you will have to double click on the string to find the location of the string in the memory. So in order to find the location of the string in the memory, we'll have to double click on it. And we have the string here. So as you can see, flag, PTR flag, can I make it any more obvious? But obviously, this is not the correct value of the flag. So we have to find the correct value. That's why we go to window and click on define strings. When you click on define strings, you will be taken to the window here, which has the define strings. Now we'll look for, use the filters window to find the flag. So we will use the words or the flag to find it. So can I, so it's only one. Right click, copy it, and paste it here. So the flag is, can I make it any more obvious? The next one, strings2. Strings2 is opened here. And as always, we go to entry and find the C function. So in the C function, we have a bunch of variable definitions. We have, as you can see, local to C, local to B. One is character and the rest are undefined. The last one is pointer. So going to the values of these characters, of these variables, we see um, the first one, local to C, equal to F, and the rest are given hexadecimal values. With each hexad, with each variable, as you can see, assigned one character only, for C, for one, for seven, which means if we translate or convert these hexadecimal values to ASCII, we will get the ASCII representation. But why do we do that? If we go down, you can see the last variable is local 8. The local 8 equal to MD5 hash of local 2C or the address of local 2C. What does that mean? So local 8 will be equal to MD5 hash of the address of the local 2C and going upward. Why going upward? Go back. As you can, this is the assembly representation and the stack, as you know, grows upward. So this is the local to C, and going upward, you will have the rest of the variables. So here, ND5 hash of and local to C will take the ND5 hash of all of the values starting from local to C all the way to local uh, nine, right? All the way to local nine, yes. So basically, that's why we know 
if we convert these hexadecimal representations to ASCII, we will get the flag. Now, you can just take it one by one and convert it. You will get the answer, assemble the characters, and answer the question. Very easy. The third flag, go to strings 3. Entry function, this is the main function or the entry function. So, we have variable definitions, and we have the use of modules. So, have HR, SRC, and we have... Um, as you can see, each module. These are these are kind of modules used with these two functions: find resource A and load string A. Now, what matters to us here? Load string A, as you can see, takes the module and then kind of copies the value. What it does, it copies the value from the address of 110 in hexadecimal and stores it in the address of local 4A4. So after that, take the MD5 hash and print out of the screen. So basically, that's how we know that the flag lies here. So we want to find out where the flag in this uh, line of code. So since it copies the value from this address, right, and then prints it out from these variables, we'll have to find the value that it actually copies from this address. Double clicking on that address, takes us to the assembly code of this address. So, as you can see, it contains load string A, and the module it loads is user32 DLL. On the right, we see kind of value here. Flag resources are popular. So, if you want to find the complete flag, you will have to use the strings. Search for resources are popular you see one value right click copy it and go back answer it that was it i hope you find this helpful and see you in the next video